It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Monster Monday presented by DraftKings, and we are kicking off the week in a major way with my buddy Adam Schefter from ESPN. You guys know it's a new week. You know the spread the word winner via social media or the email confirmation winner. You take advantage of a sponsor or I love the YouTube shout outs that I'm able to give. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. Lots of news to get to, but I want to get right to Adam Schefter. I can't wait. It's big show time. The big show. I think everybody already knows who he is, but I'll say it anyway. Adam Schefter, the NFL insider for ESPN, who also has a very successful podcast yourself, Adam. Well, Ross, I don't know that I have the dramatic music that you have, what you play when you bring me on, but that's very impressive. I must tip my cap to you about that music. That's got me all fired up here. (laughs) That's all. That's all, Brian. Thank you very much, Adam. We appreciate well, good job, that. Brian. Yeah, good you know, job, Brian. usually we record pretty early in the morning. Today we're doing it midday. It doesn't often happen, Adam, but I guess there have been multiple reports. I haven't even looked on Twitter to see if you've tweeted it yet, but multiple reports that Deshaun Watson uh, is reportedly meeting with the NFL this week. What does that mean, Adam? Do do you have any insight into that? Any type of timeline or anything? Yeah, well, first of all, we were doing the schedule release show in Bristol last week, and that was a big topic of conversation because the Browns are on Monday Night Football on October 31st, I believe, is the date against the Bengals. And as I said last week, the NFL wants to make a decision as quickly as it can. It would like to have this matter wrapped up, if it's possible, by training camp, by at some point this summer. Now, I don't know that it can, but I think what's important to note here, Ross, is this is going to be the first review of a case under the personal conduct policy under the new collective bargaining agreement. We haven't had one of these before, where essentially Roger Goodell isn't the one who makes the decision. Lisa Friel is the one who's investigating, and she's the one whether they, she's the one who has to decide whether or not they're going to discipline him. And she works with Todd Jones in the league office. And then if they decide that they're going to discipline Deshaun Watson, they go to the NFLPA uh, and come up with a decision. Roger Goodell essentially is out of it, but it's the first test case under the new personal conduct policy under the new CBA. So we really are in unprecedented waters here. I know that. We've seen Ben Roethlisberger disciplined before. We've seen Zeke Elliott disciplined before without charges. Uh, There are no charges here. The league is being very careful, very meticulous here. The civil suits are pending and still going forward. So we'll see what the league decides here. Um, But again, it's, it's something of a test case in that it's a new case under the new CBA. Two, two follow-ups, I guess. One is it seems like, they usually are able to come to a decision relatively soon after they talk to the the player. It seems like Mm -hmm. they talk to the player last, and then I don't know if it's a week or two weeks or whatever, they're usually able to make a decision. And then are you saying, um, Adam, that we don't really have any precedent here because we don't, it's not like we can go back to the Roethlisberger or the Zeke Elliott or whatever, because yeah, what I'm that, saying, that's Russ, kind of is wiped out. Yeah, I, I don't want to say it's wiped out. I mean, like, I, I, there is precedent, of course, but I'm saying this is different. So that the way that those cases were judged are not going to be the way that this case is judged. And we don't know what that means. We're waiting to see, right? Like, that was Roger Goodell saying, okay, I think Ben Roethlisberger got six. It was reduced to five, or did he get six? And Zeke got six, right? So my point is, just because Roger Goodell ruled six on those guys doesn't mean that Deshaun Watson's getting it. Maybe it's more. Who knows? We don't know what's going to happen here. Very interesting. Yeah, obviously, there's a lot of people that are really curious to see what ends up happening there. It's also kind of unique, Adam, just in the sense that it doesn't seem like at this point, as far as I know, I, I don't follow it that closely, but none of the civil cases are resolved yet. So there's no. still sort of these these cases hanging over him. 
Yeah, no, they're they're going forward. Where there are twenty two of them, I think. So, a lot of questions there. A lot of questions with the league. League trying to get some information. League wants to make a decision quickly. New standard of judgment, if you will. I think that's the best way of looking at it. Don't know that precedent applies, whatever that means. So we'll see. We're also going to see what happens with Baker Mayfield. Uh, it, it's weird. My, my interpretation, Adam, is that, you know, these teams like a Seattle or a Carolina, they're kind of playing chicken with Cleveland because is Cleveland going to cut them? Does because Cleveland really want to show up for training right. camp? That's that's my guess is what's going on here. You think that's fair or am I totally off? I think there's some level of interest in Baker Mayfield. I don't know that these teams feel the urge and compelled to go make a move for a guy that the Browns already have moved on from in the sense that they've traded for Deshaun Watson. They've signed Jacoby Brissett. They've signed Josh Dobbs. They've got quarterback replacements. They are on the hook for $18.85 million in guaranteed money. And so what's the rush for Seattle or Carolina other than, yeah, you'd like to get him in and have him work in your system. But you know what? If you don't during the spring, you don't. <laughs> and, and I don't think any of these teams are willing to give up something that is going to make the Cleveland Browns make that move today. Uh, maybe something will change tomorrow or next week or next month, Ross. But to date, nobody's been willing to step up to pay what it takes because they know that the Browns are in a position where they're going to have to move on from him. So is it fair to say, Adam, that these other teams are just waiting for the Browns to have to cut them or to have to get desperate to not have them at training camp or whatever the Browns are, you know, have to do with that situation. But the Browns are thinking, well, there's not a reason for us to not hold on to them right now. Maybe somebody gets hurt somewhere else. It feels like they're both kind of yeah, trying waiting. to wait out and yeah. see if they can get more leverage later on in the process. And I think that's fair too, right? If you're the Cleveland Browns and you use the number one overall pick on a quarterback who's had mixed degree of results, or yeah, right? Um, he's still a quarterback, Ross. And at some point this summer, I don't know when, somebody's going to need a quarterback. Somebody's going to want a quarterback. Somebody's going to be looking for a quarterback. And so Cleveland can maximize his return whenever that is, right? Like it happens every year. Remember the year that the Eagles lost, um, well, the, the Vikings lost somebody. The, the Vikings Teddy Bridgewater. lost, lost Tavares Jackson, I think. Well, they so lost the Teddy Vikings Bridgewater. Traded, or no, no, Teddy Bridgewater got Teddy hurt. Teddy Bridgewater, and they so traded, Vikings for, Sam traded Bradford. for Bradford. Right. And, and so, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe, uh, in Tennessee, I, I, something happens with Tannehill. I, you, you just don't know. So right. the Browns have a commodity. Like, he's a former number one overall pick at a position in demand. Nobody's interested right now, but that doesn't mean a month from now they won't be. But by the way, the same thing is true of Jimmy Garoppolo in San Francisco. We can use the same line of thinking, except I don't think San Francisco um, is ready to move on from him right now unless they got an offer that they felt was fair and commensurate with his value, and, and that's not happening right now either. That's just related to the health, though, right? I'm, I'm curious about that because I'm assuming the Niners are going to have to let people examine him, and I don't know if he throws for uh, teams. Uh, I mean, Russ, Russ, who is the team, whether it's Jimmy Garoppolo or Baker Mayfield, that's willing to absorb 20 to $25 million in salary, trade a pick, and he's a starting quarterback. Who's that team right now? Seattle and Carolina. Okay, so there's two of them, right? Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think they're just waiting on both. Waiting on both. No rush. Do you think, Adam, I mean, I don't know what they do in these situations, but he had a big-time surgery. They said he can't throw until June or July. I mean, I feel like these teams not only are going to want their doctors to look at them before they would trade money to take on that contract, but maybe even watch them throw, almost like he's a, a college player. Yeah, I mean, it is still shoulder surgery. It's not considered to be a major deal, but it's shoulder surgery on a quarterback, right? It's like almost like a running back with knee surgery. Um, you want to see what you're buying if you're going to be honing up $25 million in some sort of draft pick compensation. 
you think there's any chance they would trade him to Seattle or, or no, no way? Yeah. Yeah. I, well, if Seattle made an offer, I think that they would, I don't think that would be their first choice. I think they'd rather not, but if it came to be and Seattle made a compelling offer, which by the way, if Seattle didn't make an offer before the draft, then why is it going to make an offer now? Well, because they didn't get anybody in the draft and, and maybe they're waiting until Jimmy's healthy. Yeah, but they also had options to go quarterback in the draft and bypass them. And so maybe all along they've been plotting. I don't know that. Um, but yeah, I, I, it would look, Jim, Jimmy Garoppolo had a good year last year. And, and if you watch the tape, um, it's pretty impressive what he did. So we'll see who wants him next year. But uh, I think he's a good quarterback. You know, we've seen recently, Adam, some free agent signing. Um, you know, guys, notable guys, Jarvis Landry, Melvin Ingram. I guess I'm curious. It feels like, and maybe we say this every year, but there's still a bunch of guys out there. Bradbury, Odell Beckham, you know, uh, Trey Flowers, Clowney, J.C. Treader, Eric Fisher, um, Ogan Joby, and Dominican right. Sue, Anthony Barr. It's a lot. It, it, yeah, it feels like there's more than usual. Does it feel like that to you, or is there any specific reason why? Well, when you say all those names and string them all together, it, it that's quite a lot of talent that's still on the street. And I I don't have an explanation for why that is, but there are a lot of players who can help. And my guess is um, right before camp or shortly thereafter, you'll see all these guys sign, if not before, because they're good players and they can help. Yeah, I, I I tend to agree. What's um, your theory? What's your theory on why they're out there? So many. You got one for me? You're a smart guy. Yeah, you know, um, I think some of these guys like here, I gotta go through it, but like Sue uh Clowney despises training camp. Yeah. Odell Beckham Jr.'s hurt. hurt. Um, I think Sue wants to sit, doesn't as I think a lot of these can. guys they don't want to sign until training camp. I yeah. think they want to skip the off season. Like they, they like their off season yeah. flexibility. Okay. I think that's a decent part of it for some of these, some of these guys, I just don't know how much of a market there will still be for them. Some of them might actually be waiting like a Fisher or a treader might be waiting for somebody to get hurt and a team that need a starting center need a left tackle. And then the price might go up, right? So they're waiting like, you know what? Okay. I could always get veteran minimum with incentives or I could always get a low number. Now let me wait until they're, is a team that has a real need and then I'll step in and play. Yeah. It's interesting. I think when Bradbury got cut, I think everybody thought something would happen right away. Adam, what's going on there? Well, listen, there've been a lot of teams checking in on him. Obviously he's looking for a decent amount of money. Uh, feels like he's worth it. I, I think that he feels like he wished he had been a free agent earlier in the off season when the money would have been greater. So I think he's trying to get his value up there to what he could have gotten had he been released in March. Got it. That makes sense. You know, speaking of March, I think a week or two before uh, free agency started, I reached out to you and, hey, we got, it's a couple of weeks till free agency. Can you come on the show? And you're like, Ross, these two weeks, these yeah. three weeks, like I am locked in. I am locked and loaded, which is awesome, which leads me to my question. Is there ever a time when you're not locked and loaded? No, Do it's you gotten, get the it's, last two weeks yeah. of June. You get the first three weeks of July. Do you get some time to not be locked and loaded? You know, you know what happens? Just life for all of us, every one of us, you, me, anybody listening, life is just busy. It just is. Like even today, we had planned to talk a little bit earlier. And I'm running, I got a couple of things going on right now that I'm just trying to deal with. And it just, I don't know what it is. You know, but those two weeks, I'm not going to be on the phone you know, with somebody where all of a sudden I'm getting a call in and I can't take it because I'm doing a podcast. Like, yeah, yeah, why? you can't do it. Can't I, do it. Like, what's the, what's the game there? What's the upside? No, you can't do it. I'm, it, I'm, I, I thought I wasn't thinking, I thought two weeks before free agency, maybe like before you got really busy, but I get it. But, but, but by saying, the way, you know, you know, you know what happens then you do those, you do shows. I've learned this two weeks before free agency. And you say, yeah, I think the market's going to be strong for Jimmy McGraw. And all of a sudden, every, th every little thing you say turns into a headline, right? Market's going to be strong for Jimmy Garoppolo. This guy, you know, the, uh, Tyree Kill could be traded. Like, I, it's a lot of speculation. And the speculation gets turned into headlines. 
<laughs> that's that's your blessing and your curse, man. It's it, yeah, I guess so. It's uh, it's eye opening. But my my point, my question stands. Second to last question: Do you do you get time to turn it off? Like late I, June, I, early July? Yeah. Well, listen, it's slower. It's slower in June and July. It is, but the job is such you just never know what's going to come up. Right. Like I, I didn't know that on Monday morning, Jair Alexander was going to sign a four year, $84 million contract extension that included a $30 million signing bonus. The biggest signing bonus given to it. Like, I didn't know that, that was coming on Monday morning. Right. And, and, and Monday afternoon, there'll probably be something else. And I can assure you um, this week, th- things just always pop up. You named all those free agents who are still out there. You mentioned the Sean Watson and the NFL. I don't know what it's going to be, Ross, but this league is the greatest reality show out there with all due respect to all the TV shows that Bravo puts on the air about its housewives. <laughs> uh, last thing, Adam, we've talked about it before. Um, you know, it's awesome that that you, uh, you're you a part of what we're doing at MyFrontPageStory.com. Yeah. Haven't actually had a chance to update you that much. We had a great Valentine's Day, a great Mother's Day. Um, it's awesome. I'm glad you're a part of it. Yeah. Um, I know I don't get to update you that often, but I guess I'm doing it here on the show, but you obviously saw enough in it that you wanted to be a part of it at some point. Well, I'm a believer in the written word. I'm a believer in thoughtful gifts. And so what's better than the written word that is a thoughtful gift. And that is my front page story right there. Right. And you go take that clipping and put it on an ad. Cause it's true. If you want to. <laughs> Touch a relative that tells somebody how important they are to you or what they mean or what they've meant to you. It, it's just a great product to me. It's, a, it's an actual written story about somebody and their lives and their meaning. And like I said, I like personalized, thoughtful gifts. I like the written word. My front page story combines all those. I love it. Adam, you should see some of the testimonials we get, some of the videos and pictures we're getting. It's awesome, man. Like, they're crying. They're so happy. It's really, really. That's what it's about, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's such a cool business. It really, like, forget even the money part of it. Just, like, to see how happy these people are with these gifts. It's really, it's really humbling. Um, Adam, you're the man. Really appreciate the time. Everybody already follows you on social media, at Adam Schefter, <laughs> but I'll throw it out there anyway. He's got the, it's the Adam Schefter podcast, right? That's the, that, that, that I, I, I'm happier that you mentioned that than Twitter. Thank you, Russ. Yes, because Adam Schefter podcast is a very different way to look at Adam and to, and to, Adam's not just a newsbreaker. Like he's a good interviewer. So I encourage people to listen to that show as well. Adam, thank you so much for the time, man. I really appreciate it. Ross, nice to be with you always. Great job by you and great job by Brian on the music. <laughs> There he is, Adam Schefter. That was phenomenal. You know what's not phenomenal? Getting your house broken into. (laughs) I don't know what. I didn't have a good segue for that one. I am sorry, Simply Safe and your founders, Chad and Eleanor Lauren. It's true, though. It's not cool. It's not phenomenal to have your house broken into. I tell you guys every week that twice, I think the first time I was in seventh or eighth grade, second time was just a couple years ago, I can't highly recommend enough making sure you have a home security system. Here's the deal, right? Either you don't have one and you don't even realize what you're missing and the peace of mind that you get if you have one, or you do have one and you're not realizing that Simply Safe is way better because there's no long term contract. You can set it up in like 30 minutes, it costs less than a dollar a day. And it's all those reasons are why it's the best home security system of 2022, third year in a row. As my listener, you can claim a free indoor security camera, plus save 20% on your Simply Safe security system and get your first month free with the interactive monitoring service. Visit simplysafe.com slash Tucker to customize your system and start protecting your home and family today. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash Tucker. Tuck's takes. 
Hi, Ross. So let's start today with a couple of things that you and Adam already discussed and get your thoughts. First, the multiple reports from the NFL that they were going to meet with, well, not from the NFL, that the NFL is going to meet with Deshaun Watson this week. By the way, speaking of cutting clips for an ad, Brian, you, uh, Adam called you out twice. Yeah, well, I I, I paid him off, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, That was awesome. So, yeah, I mean, this news just came out, like, right before we were recording. Um, I think everyone is beyond curious to see what ends up happening with Deshaun Watson, how many games he misses. I think the NFL not having any primetime games for the Browns till the 31st of October was probably by design. Adam seems to think that I didn't even think or realize that the new collective bargaining agreement changed the process a little bit. That does make it a little more interesting. Although I still think his punishment will fall in line with the Zeke Elliott and Ben Roethlisberger's of the world. Ducks takes. Yeah, the bit of news that you two spoke about, Packers signing Jair Alexander to a four-year, $84 million extension. Isn't that wonderful? $21 million a year for that young man to play football. $30 million signing bonus because the Packers never like to guarantee any money past the first year, which is kind of weird. And I don't know, maybe like a little silly. So you just give an insane signing bonus. Okay. 30 million. Great. So you cut me after a year. Sweet. She's got over 30 million. I mean, he gets like 35 million or something crazy. 30, you know, there's a roster bonus too. He gets a crazy amount of money this first year, I guess, because the Packers want to stick to their precedent of no guaranteed future money. I, I don't know. I mean, you're basically implicitly guaranteeing it anyway. So what's the difference? I'm not sure I understand that. I do understand that Alexander is a heck of a player and that the Packers do do a really good job. Usually not always Devonte Adams of keeping around their guys. I guess it's easier with the second contract when a guy can get life altering money, than it's the third contract where the guy like Devonte Adams already got the life altering money. Tucks takes in other news, Raiders sign Keelan Cole and then trade Brian Edwards and a seventh round pick to the Falcons for a fifth round pick. Right. So Keelan Cole, I've always thought, I remember talking about him on the podcast years ago, his first year or two in Jacksonville. And I thought he's good. He can play. And nobody really even knew who he was. I don't know that he's become a ton more than that, but he stuck around for a while. The Raiders obviously saw something in him. And then as for Brian Edwards, Brian Edwards was a guy that people really hyped coming out of South Carolina really thought would be a great fit with the Raiders. He had a solid year last year, over 500 yards receiving, and the Falcons got him for like peanuts. I mean, it's a fifth-round pick, but they're getting back a seventh-round pick. They're really just moving uh, down a couple rounds, moving from the fifth round to the seventh round. Uh, the Raiders must have really saw something or know something they don't like, and the Falcons decided to take advantage. Tucks takes. And finally, the New Orleans Saints sign wide receiver Jarvis Landry and the Dolphins sign edge rusher Melvin Ingram. Two teams that are going for it this year. That's my big takeaway here. This is two teams that they think they have a chance to be pretty darn good. And they're going for it. You see it in the Tyreek Hill trade for the Dolphins, signing Teron Armstead. Now you get Melvin Ingram. The Saints doing what they've done, obviously reaching out and getting Tyron Matthew, now Jarvis Landry, trading a lot of future picks to get Chris Olave. Both these teams appear to be fully intent and believe that they're going to make the playoffs this year and do some damage. I, I think it's probably fair to say, and I said this on Twitter and Instagram, at Ross Tucker NFL, that... The Saints clearly think they have a bigger opportunity this year and that they are better than anybody else does. By the way, Saints fans got so upset about that. What 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 is there to be upset about? 
look at their season win total. Talk to analysts that think they'll be around 500. The Saints obviously think they can and will be more than that. That's great. That'd be awesome if they were. But I put on Instagram or Twitter that the Saints think they're better than anybody else thinks they are. And people get so upset about it. It wasn't even supposed to be a knock. It's a fact. An absolute fact. Speaking of a fact, Ufos is the greatest footwear of all time. This active recovery footwear, shoes, slides, boots, and clogs, I am hooked. It's the point now where if I'm in any other footwear other than Ufos, I am missing my Ufos. It's the foam technology. It's the patented footbed. It's like walking. Get one Ufos. Get the Ufos flops or the Ufos slides. Or if you want to get the shoes, go for it. And then tell me I'm wrong. You, you Tell me I'm wrong. You can email me, Ross at Ross. If I'm wrong, I will say on the air, I'll read your email saying, Ross, you were wrong. The footwear is not amazing. Because it is amazing. And make sure when you buy some, make sure you send me an email so I can send the people at Ufos. There's no code or anything right now. Nothing. Just say, I got Ufos because you told me to, Ross. Brian, let's do an email. Ever wanted to ask an NFL player a question? Well, here's here's your your chance. chance. It's time to ask Ross. Email address, ross at rosstucker.com. Love your emails because it usually means that you've taken advantage of one of our sponsors, which is huge. And then send it to me, ross at rosstucker.com. So you can ask me a question. What do you got, Brian? Today's question from Brandon Owen. Hey, Ross, it is becoming more clear that the NFL has a tanking problem or the perception of one is increasing. I have a possible solution to incentivize winning, but still allow losing teams an avenue to improve. Here goes. The top three draft slots are awarded to teams with the most wins above their projected preseason win totals. The NFL could have a sports betting company sponsor the projections. So, Teams with the lowest projected win total have the greatest chance of getting the top pick, but a playoff team theoretically could land the number one pick as well. The clearest way to improve via the draft, well, it's to win. Rest of the picks can be seeded by record, so if a team has an unexpected injury or underperforms, they still have a chance to improve as well. Thanks for your time. I love the content. Again, that is from Brandon Owen. Brandon, really interesting email. Um, I'm glad you sent it. So... I do think that's kind of a cool way to do it Um, and to try to incentivize winning because teams would want to be as high above their season win total as possible to try to get the number one pick. I guess the issue I have is what you're going to get a decent amount of time is a team that was picked to go around 500 that gets 12, 13 wins. Then you have one of the best teams get number one pick, which affects parity. I also don't believe that the NFL would want to be that tied in with sports books. I'm not sure anytime, but certainly not anytime soon. Because then you're putting a, a you're putting a big influence on where they set the preseason win totals. I don't know that the NFL wants to glorify or magnify the preseason win totals especially since a lot of teams aren't aren't expected to be good. So I think that's kind of the issue there. It's a good idea, though, Brandon, a really good idea. Appreciate the email. Appreciate all of you that contribute to the show in any way. Hopefully, if you're an AFC North fan, you checked out today's College Draft Podcast. We went over all the AFC North draft picks. Bengals, Browns, Steelers, Ravens with Emory Hunt and Jeff Zrebeck. We'll have the Even Money podcast tomorrow, which should be awesome with Fezzik taking a look at the NFL Week 1 lines now that the schedule came out Thursday night. So that'll be epic. Really looking forward to that one. Hopefully you guys listened or watched the Michael North episode over the weekend because that was always really, really informative as well. Shout-outs to Pizza Boy Brewing, Sportaculture, Evergreen Economics, go-bangles.com. You better have watched or listened to the college draft. SteakhouseSports.com. 
and humanheadnyc.com. Other than that, I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feasts, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.